Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the Grundig Satellite 3400 Saga. It is a saga. It's on video 10 at the moment, I believe. And um, I'm just I'm just having fun. Um, I actually try to justify to myself that uh, perhaps this will sort of stay on the channel as a as a how to for anybody wanting to restore these video these radios. And maybe I'll be doing the same because I really, really, really enjoy this uh, this particular set. So I haven't seen much in terms of how to's with with this particular set. And they are very, very popular. I've noticed prices are going up all the time. So perhaps this will help a lot of people if they want to tackle uh, repair or alignment or whatever they want to do with it. That's what I really would like this to become. If I can do a series that actually becomes useful and um, will last because, you know, th these radios are old enough that in 10 years time, they'll still be old enough. People will still be restoring them. I'm hoping that this will help uh, a lot of people along the way. That's the goal anyway. For now, I want to complete the FM alignment. I want to get that out of the way because I do want to do the drum tuner alignment. I have a feeling, and it's just a feeling, that perhaps the best improvement we're going to get is in the uh, the uh, RF alignment for the AM bands, especially the drum tuner, because that thing was all loose inside. It's almost like somebody opened up, opened it up, didn't really know how to put it back. And because it's all working, I think maybe all they did was messed with something. I'm hoping. So uh, that's what I want to do next. But for now, let's finish this uh, section of the FM alignment. Stick around. Hope you enjoy it. Moving right along, we come to the um, FM RF alignment. And the first thing they tell us to do is to adjust the tuning voltages. Now, what do they mean by tuning voltages? This is a tuner. Why are we adjusting voltages? Well, this thing is not a normal tuner. Well, I suppose it depends what you call normal. This thing uses very cap tuning. This does not use a condenser, a capacitor, a variable capacitor to tune the circuit. It uses very cap diodes. And very cap diodes have a capacitance which is altered depending on the bias voltage that you apply to it. So that gives us a great opportunity to use a voltage, adjusted voltage, to adjust the capacitance of the very cap diodes and thereby adjusting the frequency the tune frequency of a tank circuit in which you have the diodes. So let's just quickly see what they tell us to do. They say at the slider of the tuning resistor, with the FM button depressed, obviously, and with the FM pointer at the right-hand end of the scale, adjust the voltage with R341, which is a 10K pot, in the 30 volt converter to 30 volts plus minus 100 millivolts. And then you go with the FM pointer at the left-hand end of the scale with R473, which is another trimmer, to 2.1 volts plus minus 10 volts. Well, this is sort of telling us already what you, they want us to do. They want us to determine what the maximum and the minimums will be to control the tuning. In other words, we know now that the maximum tuning voltage that you want to see when you have this thing dialed up to the one end of the scale, in this case, the uh, right hand end of the scale, will be a fixed 30 volts plus minus 100 millivolts. And they want us to set the minimum when the dial is on the other end of the scale to 2.1 volts plus minus 10 millivolts. So you're basically setting the two extremes. And what are you setting? You're actually setting the two extremes of voltages but also of the capacitance that the very cap diodes are going to have at those voltages, right? If you look at the front end of the tuner, this is that potentiometer here, and S is that wiper that they mention, and they tell us we have to depress FM, so we have to select FM, so we're making that point over there. And if we follow the wiper back here, the wiper will now be connected to that point over there. And we can actually see, they tell us here, that this is adjusted to 30 volts plus minus 0.1 volts, and it's adjusted with R341, okay? What are we doing? Well, we've got this at one end of the scale on FM, and we are controlling the maximum voltage that this line here is going to see. We'll see why in a second. We also see that the preset circuits also feed to this line over here. In other words, this potentiometer over here, for example, if you selected that particular preset, that would feed a voltage 
to that line over there. But at the moment we've got FM selected, so we are sending 30 volts up here. We're at the end of the scale. What does this mean? Well, this voltage goes across here to a plug and plugs into the FM board. And the FM board, if we follow this line over here, comes to here and it goes to those two diodes. Those two diodes are very cap diodes. They are back to back. You are actually biasing them here in a way that gives us the best uh, linearity. But these diodes are basically a capacitor. You can imagine this as one capacitor that's altered or altering depending on the voltage that's coming in here. And it is one component of this tank circuit over here. This is just a tank circuit. It's got an inductor and it's got a capacitor, which happens to be three capacitors in this case, right? One of them is a trimmer and one of them is variable. So no different than if you had a tuning capacitor section over here, right? So that tunes the aerial circuit, the antenna circuit of the front end. If we take this one step further and we go along here, we see that it comes to here. And there, that same voltage that we adjusted comes and meets this pair of very cap diodes, which in turn is part of a selection circuit, basically a tuned circuit, which has a very cap diode, which is a capacitor here, another trimmer cap, a resistor, and an inductor over here. So this is a tuned circuit. So this is the pre the RF amplifier, which um, takes that pre-selected band of, volta of uh, frequencies amplifies them and then you filter it further with this tank circuit over here, right? And that goes then to that point over here, to that transistor over there. But if you follow this through, it goes one step further. It goes to here, comes down, and it goes to another set of very cap diodes. And this is the oscillator section. So this again is another tank circuit made up of a variable capacitor, if you can imagine that to be the function of the very cap diodes. And you've got another capacitor here to ground, trimmer, a fixed cap, and an inductor, right? So again, you've got a tank circuit, and this one happens to be oscillating at a slightly higher level than that one, because this is the uh, oscillator circuit. So you can adjust all sorts of things over here, but basically your uh, initial settings, you're setting the extremes of what the, the capacitance is going to be when your tuning condenser, or rather when your tuning pot is at one extreme and then down to the other, right? So that's how that works. Now, where are these components that we mentioned? We're talking about adjusting a voltage to 30 volts over here. So when this is on the left-hand side, you're adjusting the maximum voltage over here. So it's that trim pot over there. And then you're adjusting the minimum end, which is R473, if I'm not mistaken, okay? So where are they? Well, fortunately I have this uh, service manual, which gives us a pretty good view of the back of the radio, and it does give us some of these points. Where are we? Here's one, 341. That, if you follow that line down there, that's that guy over there. The other one is 473, which is directly above it, above that board. So here it is over here. There's our 473. And we have to find the wiper of the uh, pot that uh, does the tuning. Now, that'll be over here somewhere. So let's have a look at that. Remember the back of the set that we saw on that uh, service manual? Here's the one point. That is for the 30 volts. And back here, right behind that red coil, that's the trim pot for the lower end for 2.1 volts. And way back in here is that potentiometer. And the wiper is that red wire over there, the middle one. That's where we're going to connect the positive of the uh, multimeter to to measure the voltage. We'll turn the dial all the way to the right-hand end. That's just beyond 108 over there. I've got FM selected, so I'll turn the radio on. Wow, look at that. Thirty point zero five. that's certainly within 30 plus minus 100 millivolts, so I'm going to leave that exactly where it is. If not, I would have adjusted that guy there. Now we'll turn the dial all the way to the opposite end, which is just below the 88 over there. And that's what we get, 2.112. That's pretty close to 2.1, but I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tweak. Ah. 
and that should settle and that's done. As you can see this uh, especially at the low end you do get a bit of drift so the way to adjust it is you give it a bit of a tweak let it settle correct if you need to let it settle and so on I think that's perfect that's going to be good enough for us and we've got another stage done. Well we've done all that let's move on to the actual uh, alignment see how we do this B we have to align the oscillator filter and aerial circuits and they've got two points generator frequency setting 88 megahertz so that's the low end 106 is the top end then you've got three adjustments oscillator the filter circuits and the aerial circuit and that is A C and E we'll see where that is in a minute and for the 106 would be B D and F and they're giving us some readings here but I'm trying to figure out what they mean by a maximum. Okay, first of all they tell us connect the signal generator straight to the connection for the telescopic antenna. Okay, or the aerial. So what do we need to do? Well, let's find out where these guys are first. Here we have the FM board and here we go. This is 4106 B, D and F and these are trimmer capacitors and then we should find three inductors for the 88 A, B, A, C and where, are, where is that guy? Okay here we go here it is E that's this inductor here C is this inductor here and where's the other inductor? over here A so that's that inductor there let's have a look at the actual can because this this worries me a bit this is uh, inside that can and I'm not sure that I can reach these guys I'm sure I can I think I can reach these guys but I don't know about the ones at the back so let's have a look it's exactly as I feared these are the three adjustments for the 106 and those at the back are the three adjustments for the 88 and I can't even get this to catch that cap. So you have to do it through the top. There are actually some holes at the top, but my tools don't fit in there. Oi, how do I get to this? I've got to use a ceramic or plastic tool, and I'm not sure that I can fit anything through the top there. Now these holes at the top are here for that purpose. You put a tool through here and it goes through the bottom, but I don't have one that's long enough. So I'm really not going to remove this thing. Well, wait a minute. Let me see what it's like before I start all this. With the bit that I fiddled with the FM, I've noticed something. This thing is uh, pretty much aligned. There was very, very little to do both with the IF and also with the tuning adjustments. So I'm just going to see where it is first and then uh, decide what to do later. So I'm going to set up a signal and um, see what we get. I've shown you this guy before. This is from ELV. It's a SUP3. It's a stereo FM signal generator. I can adjust the, um, the RF power. I don't know how much I need. It's probably too much anyway. I've already got it set for a, uh, a one kilohertz tone so we can hear it. And I'm going to connect this up and see what it is that, we, um, that we're getting. Where are we receiving these particular signals? That's 88, so it's set for that. I'm going to connect it with a couple of attenuators because I think it's necessary. Actually, these are three attenuators. Hang on, hang on a second, I'm being stupid. I don't need to use these attenuators. This is a little attenuator project that I built for specifically for this. I can get 10 dB, 20 dB, 20 dB, so I can get a total of uh, 50 dB attenuation. 75 ohms in, it's 300 ohms out. This output uh, conversion, this impedance matching, has got 11 dB of attenuation, so I can get about 60 dB out of this. I'm going to put it on zero for now. And I'm going to connect this to the end of that guy. 
I've actually got a connector here that goes from that antenna connector to B and C. So I'm going to put RF on. By the way, this thing has got a uh, connector, uh, an interface with the PC as well. But for something as simple as this, I can just use the, um, the actual wheel to do all the adjustments. So we've got RF on at 88 megahertz with the tone. Let's see if we are receiving it. Well, we certainly are receiving it. You can hear it. I've got the external speaker on. I've got the uh, automatic frequency control deactivated and I'm going to reduce the power on this thing because the signal seems to be very hot. That didn't make that much difference. Let's give it a bit of attenuation. Okay, let's work at it like that. I've got this connected straight to the antenna and we can put the volume down just for now because I want to show you something. Look at this. What would you do? What would you do? Would you mess with it? <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Look at that. Let me put the sound down. That's where the signal is strongest. This is set for 88 megahertz. Just look at the meter there. It is bloody on perfect. 88.00. Oh. <laughs> Let me see where the 106 is uh, going to be tuning at. Set this guy to 106. I think it might have a preset close there. You can set as many, well, you can set three presets. Here's 106. Put a bit of volume on so we can hear it. Look at that. I suppose I could call that perfect. But this thing is 106. Oh, and look at that guy. This thing is perfect. I'm sorry, folks. As anticlimactic as that might sound, I'm not touching this. I'm not touching this. If I had the tools, it's not frightening. You just um, put a signal in, check the strength meter or the audio. I'm not sure exactly which one would be the best indicator. Adjust this for oscillator that for the IF and that for the antenna. But this thing is receiving extremely well and it is exactly spot on. Now, if one of these is spot on and the, the tuning voltages were practically spot on as well, the IFs were damn close. I don't see any reason to mess with this. It's, as I said, it's not a problem. I've done this before. It's just something that's uh, more messy than anything else because if you have to remove this, or if you have to use something else. I've actually tried. I tried with a with a wooden um, stick where you, you know, file the end off like a screwdriver, put it in there. But this thing is a metal cap. It just breaks. And inside there, it's coils, so I can't really see them. I need the proper tools. And for that, I would need an extended one over here. So as far as I'm concerned, the FM is fine. Sorry. And that would take us to point C, which is adjustment of the field strength meter in the case of FM. Now here is a different, si different type of problem. I'll explain in a sec. When the FM alignment has been completed, adjust the deflection of the field strength meter to 1 by means of R356 at 88 megahertz and an input voltage of 3 microvolts. And to 9, so your minimum would be 3 microvolt input and your 9 would be a signal of greater than 1 millivolt. I can handle that. I can't handle that. So you'd adjust uh, R361 and 356. I'll show you where they are just for completeness. There we go. There's 361. There's 356. You can actually see them from the on the underside of the board. And you can reach in there. That's not a problem. 
The problem is I have no way of getting exact values here. This uh, signal generator that I've got is producing 88 uh, dB microvolts minimum. I've got all those attenuations, but I don't know what sort of impedance matching we need on here. So I don't have the ability to get close enough to 3 microvolts anywhere near accurate uh, to be able to know that it's supposed to be 1. Now what I have noticed, obviously, is that the field strength is being indicated by the meters when I tune to a station. And weak stations are showing weak and strong stations are showing strong. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say, sort of done. And um, that's about it for now. And that's it for the FM section, I think. Yeah, lots of paint, not much done. And perhaps in some of your minds, a little bit of cowardice on my, on my part. Let me explain. FM is very sensitive. Playing around with AM, you can get away with a lot of stuff. You can get away with all sorts of things. You can get away with using metal screwdrivers and extended screwdrivers sometimes. Uh, you know, you can go in and adjust something and pull it away and see what the effect is. With FM, you're dealing with much, much higher frequencies. And remember, when you're dealing with these frequencies, you're actually dealing with the reception frequencies. So we're talking about actual 88 megahertz, actual 106 megahertz. It's not the 10.7 megahertz IF, which in itself can be a little forgiving. These are the high frequencies or fairly high frequencies. So when you mess around with the wrong tools, you're asking for trouble. And if this thing was not working well, I wouldn't hesitate. But it's working so well, so well. I've been listening to FM these last few nights, and it really is a great sound. Um, so I'm not going to mess with it any further and risk a hell of a lot of headache trying to correct mistakes that I'm going to make with the wrong tools. Having said that, I should really get a, a, a bigger set or a more practical set of alignment tools that would allow me to go in there and actually reach. Because once you reach there, it's easy. You can hear it. You know, the, the oscillator just means that um, you are tuned. Your dial corresponds to the frequency you're tuned to. And that tells you, you just adjust it till you get it right. The filter circuit, you just adjust for maximum sound if you're using audio or maximum deflection on the meter if you're using that indicator. Same with the aerial. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's pretty basic electronic engineering. So, yeah, okay. Enough justifications. So, for now, um, I've got another thing I've discovered, and that is that the, uh, the metering is spot on as well. That metering was exactly right. And I noticed that on the AM. I did comment when I did the uh, AM IF alignment that perhaps the meter was off. It is not. I've tried sending some signals, and I'm getting spot on tuning on that or indication on that meter. So that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to cut this one here short, shorter for now because um, I'm getting ready for the, the, big, the big task, which is this, the uh, AM oscillator filter and aerial circuit alignment. I am not going to um, skip out of this one, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Uh, I really want to do this. Uh, I enjoy this sort of thing, actually. And uh, I want to do that, and I want to make sure that the drum tuning is accurate and as sensitive as I can make it. So that's probably going to be quite a long video, which means perhaps you'll forgive me for this one being a little bit shorter and disappointing. Anyway, once again, I want to thank you all for your company. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And um, if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon. Links are at the end of the video and in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.